Hi there, this is Sarah again. Um, as I always like to start, I'll start in a word of prayer before I get into the details of what I'm talking about today. Most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, God, as I come before you, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. May you open up my mouth with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Heavenly Father, may you give me, there, God, the words that you would help me to say. I pray, dear God, for everyone that is going to listen to this program, and I pray, dear God, that they may get a blessing, revelation, whatever their needs may be, dear God. And I, too, dear God, may be filled with it because it is not my words, but your words. May your will be done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So hi guys, it's me again, Sarah. Like I said, every week I will be trying to bring a video to you and it's talking about almost anything that we can go through and just my life experience. If I can help you, then you might be able to help me. You never know. So let's just get started. Today, I was talking with someone and um, a lady in a food store. Well, actually, it all started last week. So my daughter, I sent her up the street, not too far from where I work, to a food store to get some um, items for our lunch before school began, because as you know, I'm a teacher. And so on her way there, she said she met this gentleman in a car and he came and pulled up next to her and asked her um, if she wanted to see him again and told her that she's beautiful, not take it, that she's only nine years old. What is a big grown man going to ask a young girl if you wanna see him again at that age? But anyway, my daughter, um, having the Spirit of God within her, she ran away from the car and proceeded into the store. The lady who was there, she was like, this girl, she came in, she looked like she was shaken up, and she said, Miss, um, can I tell you something, please? And the lady said, she said, go ahead. And my daughter, she told her, she said, there's a gentleman out there in a white Honda car, and it's tinted windows, and he asked me if I wanted $5, that, and told me I'm a beautiful girl, what school I go to, and he, if I want to see him again. So the lady said, what? You know, you know, because she knows that she's only nine years old. My daughter is slim and small, so you couldn't take her for somebody that is much older. So anyway, the lady proceeded to ask her, do you know your mom's number? So she gave her my number, and she called me and told me, you know, before I call the police I want you to come here because she's very shaken up so I went there my daughter was behind the cash register with her and she came and gave me a hug and she's like mommy a, a gentleman came up to me and he asked me if I want to see him again and I said what did you do she said I ran in here and I told the lady to call you because I don't want to ever see him again so I said you won't have to do that anymore we called the police they took a report but why I'm telling you this is because, okay, we as mothers and, you know, even if I'm talking to fathers, single or married um, couples, we who have children, we who have children, we, we want to take care of our children. We want to give them the best. And how can we give them the best if there are uh, pedophiles out there, if there are pre people who want to harm us and them? You know, we can't be with our kids 24-7, but thanks be to God that he is with our kids 24-7. He is with them day and night. He is with them in and out, wherever they may be. My older kids could tell you 5 a.m. in the morning, we used to get up every morning and we would pray. I said, Lord, cover my children from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet. Bless them on the highways and the byways wherever they may go, wherever they enter, wherever they reside, wherever they, they set their feet, may you bless them and that you may send your angels to protect them, set those angels so high that Satan can't get over them, so low that he can't get under them and put them neatly around me and my kids that they can't get through because Satan is out there, I am telling you no lie, and he is trying to deceive, he is trying to destroy, he is trying to mean and 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 cripple right now we have this this thing going around where the lady let me get back to the story was saying she said you know for a man to do that he must be very nasty and not only that you heard about the many incidents that happened the young man that ripped open a three-year-old child sexually 
And while his girlfriend was right there in the presence, not only that, the other day, a 12-year-old girl was molested. Um, a 7-year-old girl was playing with her cousins in the back of the yard and went missing. And up to the day, they still haven't found out where, where is God and all of this. And I'm like, you know, God is there. We just need to call on his name and let him know that, hey, we don't have the strength on our own. We, we can't be with our children 24-7, so you take them. You know what my daughter said the other day, go um, drifting away from the, the, the topic. She said, Mommy, you know, my dad, he doesn't take care of me. He doesn't come around. He isn't with us. You know, you take care of me. You're my mom. You take, but we always ask God for help, and he helps us. So I believe that I am God's child. What we have to do, we have to give our children to, to God, just like Hannah. We have to say, Lord, you gave these children to us. We are going to give them back to you. And let him protect them from all harm and danger, sudden death and destruction, because on the street is a cruel world. So back to the story again. So I took her to the police station. We filed a report. You wouldn't even believe it. The police, who are supposed to be our... Um, protectors. They are supposed to be there to take care of the community. They send me from one police station to the next police station. One police talked to me and her, got our report. The next one talked to me and her, got our report. And they're like, you know, um, why are you bringing this? Did anything happen to her? And I'm like, no, nothing happened to her, but I'm bringing it to you so that there won't be this happening again. Um, the police that came there, this morning said that they would have gone to the store and try to find out if there are CT cameras or something. So are y'all going to do that? And they're like, no, nothing happened to her. You just have to make sure that you are with her. Come on. I can't be with her 24 seven. Is this the world that we are living in now? And anyway, so now I went on Facebook and, you know, I put up some little, um, words of encouragement and post up that I'm this um, transformational coach and I would like persons to join, join me on my YouTube channel and um, invite me to come to any of your, your services or anything for youths or anything like that, women conference or anything, so that I can be able to share my story. And I thought I was doing a good thing. I mean, I still think I'm doing a good thing, but just to show you the minds of people. So here comes one of my Facebook friends. They put up this um, thing saying women need to watch their children and stop letting these children um, walk all over the place by themselves. We are not letting our children walk all over the place by themselves. We are teaching our kids to be um, independent. We are teaching them that, hey, I'm not going to always be here with you, but you are going to have to learn to not be a Cinderella, not let anybody take advantage of you. We want them to grow up and to be strong and confident women. When I was younger, yes, that was a different time, but my mom didn't shelter us in the house and keep us locked away that we don't mix with anybody. We, we learn through socialization. We learn through going through these same mishaps that, hey, life is real. Things are going to happen in life and we need to know and have the wisdom to do the right things at the right time. So um, I saw her post and what she said. So underneath it in the comment section, I decided that I would leave a little nugget. And I said, you know something? Yes. We do, as parents, need to watch our children 24-7. We need to keep them away from bad men but, and bad people, but we can't. We can be in our own homes, and these bad situations can come to us. What are we to do in this situation? We are to pray. We are to be wise. We have to be vigilant. We need to protect ourselves at all costs. My child did the right thing. She went and found help. She didn't stay there and continue to talk to him. She did not get into his car. Um, so I left that with her, but this is what I'm saying. This world has come to a place where we as parents, we are not combining our knowledge with another. We are not looking out for Susie children and Mary children. We only looking out for our kids and that's not how the world runs. It says life is a circle. It goes around. When I go to school and I teach other people's children. I get connected to them in a way where I don't want any harm reach the people children. Because as far as I'm concerned, 
they are my kids as well. They, they are in my class. I treat them like my children. I give them laws and principles and, and guidance, just how I would do my children. But if I didn't care, I would go to school every day, take a paycheck home, and care nothing about the children. Sit down, crunch up my crunch and munch, drink, sip my tea, drink my, my, my little bit of Kool-Aid or whatever, and when three o'clock come, hit the road, Jack, and you only see me until tomorrow. But I'm not like that. And we as a community should not be like that either. All this thing about selling body parts and, and kidnapping people for hundreds and thousands of dollars, are you that caught up on money that you will risk the, the, the life of another? You will spare nothing to gain money. I have books within me. I wrote my books, I put them on my laptop and I gave it to my son-in-law, at least my daughter, ex-husband. He took it, when he came back, none of the, the, the works were there. But I prayed to God, I said, Lord, you put those books and that writing in my heart. That is my story. Nobody can take this story away from me. And so even if he was to sell it, a person can only get what they can get from it, but they can't um, copyright it in a way that makes it theirs. Because why? It's my story. It's what God has given unto us. And he said, who, God's, who God bless, no man can curse. And who God curse, no man can bless. So it goes to show that even though we are in this world that we find that there is a lot of chaos, there's a lot of things that seem right, there's a lot of things that seem wrong. We are living in a balanced world where good and evil is, and we have to decide which one we are going to do. And at the end of the day, we are imperfect people. That's why God said, come to us, come to him as you are. He is not trying to make you into this perfect person. He said, come as you are. Why? Because he sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him may be safe. Save from what? Save from people criticizing you. Save from the naysayers. Save from your own mind telling you that you're not who God made you to be. So that's my nugget for today. Hope that it was something to encourage you and motivate you. See you next time. And make sure, subscribe, click on the notification bell, and stay tuned for another one of my nuggets. Transformational coaching is what I do best. Love you all. Mwah.